Okay, I think now we're ready. Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's session, Application Advantages and Wiring with Trofi. I would like to introduce today's presenter, John Caldwell from Trofi. A recorded version of this webinar will be available shortly after the webinar. We'll be sending you that uh, to your email. So please send, in, send us all of your questions through the question panel. That's on the right side of your screen. Uh, we love to hear that from you. Please send us all of your inquiries. So for those of you, of you just joining in, welcome. And I think we're ready to start. So John, please, you can start. Uh, thank you so much, Victor. I really appreciate it. <clears throat> and we have appreciated so much our partnership with EPCOM and Syscom over the uh, over the years. So thank you so much. Um, first of all, uh, Victor mentioned the chat down on the right hand side, or excuse me, on the on the bottom of your control panel. Please put uh, please put questions in there. I, I don't mind being interrupted. Uh, put any information in there that you'd like me to address in addition to the things we're already covering. I appreciate everybody joining us today. Um, and Victor, if you don't mind, would you help me monitor that if we get a lot of questions going and I happen to skip something or don't see it, I will do my best yes. to monitor, but will you also help me? Yes, totally. I'll be here. That I'll be sounds great. Thank you so much. And I appreciate Victor getting it uh, set up and going. So we find ourselves in an interesting time, an, an unprecedented time in the, in the history of our country a little bit. Um, and uh, so we're having meetings like this for training and we're grateful for the technology, but uh, I, I bring it up because I, I hope that everyone's doing okay out there. I hope that uh, the, our efforts to, uh, to take care of this uh, COVID-19 issue will be successful and that things will return to normalcy fairly soon. I know that quite a few of the installers are, are still working and uh, staying busy because a lot of people are very concerned about that at this time. So anyway, our thoughts are with you um, and I'm hoping that all of us will be able to return to, to normal soon. Uh, to get started, <clears throat> so my name is John Caldwell. I am the Marketing Training Director for Shorefy. And uh, normally, uh, I do a lot of these type of things in person, a lot of this type of training. Um, but uh, as we are in a unique situation today, we'll do it this way. Um, I do have the opportunity to get out a lot and um, go out on installations, uh, sometimes turn the screws, sometimes do the installation myself. And I've done, I went out on about 300 installations last year. And the great advantage of that is that I get to see what installers are doing in the field and uh, how they are using the SureFi equipment, the SureFi family of products to help make themselves much more efficient and also use them in a really unique group, a uh, variety of ways. And so part of what we're gonna do today is I'll share you some of the things I'm seeing, how people are using them out there in the rest of the country to expand their customer base. So that's something we'll do, be doing. Um, we'll talk a little bit today about what SureFi does, how it's a, a unique radio technology. And then we'll talk about the value proposition or why it's so important for the integrators and uh, how you can make it um, as a business decision, help you be much more efficient. We'll do an overview of the products and talk about how they're used, uh, use cases out in the field. And then um, we will do an app overview. We'll talk about how the app is used to help uh, in the field to adjust for wiring for different configurations and that kind of thing and then at the end um, we will spend a little bit of time on the basic wiring configuration so you can have a little more confidence in using the product if it's new to you and if it's not then i'll answer any questions you have also as well as, as we go all right <clears throat> so to get started uh, surefi at its core is a radio company and we have a, a radio that is unlike any other radio out there we use what's called chirp modulation, and we have 23 patents on this radio, and it means that nobody can do what we do. And uh, for those of you who've used it before, you'll know that when you have a Surefire radio, or some kind of a control unit with the radio, that, uh, that radio signal will go a lot further than any standard radio signal that you've ever tried. And that's because of the, the, the type of radio signal it is. All right, so we um, have a handful of uh, features in there. This radio will go about a mile through obstruction and over 50 miles line of sight. Now, that's a big claim. 
I get that. Um, I was an RF before I and involved in that before I came to the company, and that's that's a big claim. So, um, and we don't expect you to take our word for it. We're going to give you an opportunity to get a free test unit um, here today, so that you can prove it for yourself. Because, um, you know, let's be honest, wireless has been somewhat traditionally unreliable. Um, you know, sometimes we get disappointed in what they say. My da my daughter went to with me a few uh, years ago to a store and and bought these little handheld radios that said 36 mile range and she was so excited she thought she was going to be able to talk to grandma who lives about 25 miles away and I kind of was a little skeptical of course and she gets out there and it goes about three blocks you know and it's just it's it's her disappointment is something I think we can all feel when we get a product that we're excited and hoping can do something and then it doesn't deliver on on what we're hoping it can do so. That's part of the reason we want to give you a free evaluation kit. And I'll show you how to get that in a minute. <clears throat> Our radio is also encrypted, has 72 channel hopping, has over there rekeying and multipath. And what that does is it allows you to take go to your customers that have security sensitivity, um, for example, airports or uh, social media, uh, clients, um, police stations, uh, schools, things like that, that are very concerned about the security. And they can look at the security package that comes with this radio and be um, assured that it will take care of them and uh, it will not be uh, hacked into. We even had a, a customer that wanted to use our radio that, uh, that hired a, a gentleman out of Microsoft to try to, to, to break our encryption and they could not do it. I'm not gonna say anything's unbreakable because it's possible that anything's breakable but no one, they haven't done it yet so and because of that we tell people that it is more secure than wire which is kind of a strange thing to say because a lot of people think well wire is the most secure but the truth is, is that wire is going through a building somewhere in a drop ceiling through the wall in a bathroom or whatever and that wire is susceptible you know it might be even in the ground in, in conduit so you can get on and, and harvest that that credential all you want if you can have access to the wire so technically we are more more secure than wire um, and a lot of people when they start getting that thought process they realize that surefire is a better way to go so this is how we're going to have you to help you prove this thing okay so um if you look right here nope i'm going to back up one more time on the bottom uh, right hand side of your screen that is an evaluation kit an evaluation kit allows you to take these units uh, with you into the field. You keep them, you'll keep it in your car, your truck, your van, whatever. When you go and do a, a site walk, you pull that evaluation kit out, you put one unit uh, there on your controller, take the other one out to whatever doors or gates or whatever or else you want to go to and send that signal, you push the test button and it'll show you what you can do. We've got a little video that shows you how this is done, but I found that this is probably our best salesman ever. And what I say that is it it does the talking for us. We don't have to, to talk you into trying something when you can have your own evaluation kit. Now it's a $200 value, um, but we are willing to invest in integrators and invest in customers. And so when they receive that and they can test it and they can prove it to themselves, but also to their clients and say, hey, um, you know, owner of this hotel, I know that you don't like wireless, but look what this thing can do. Then all of a sudden, they're confident in the idea, you're confident in the idea, and you can move forward. So uh, on this next page, you'll see that we have a website put up there, and it's surefy.com forward slash sign up. And when you go to that uh, web page, you're going to see there's a number there to call, and uh, we've had quite a few people requesting these, which is great, that's how we want it. Um, but go ahead and call that number. You'll talk to a young lady. She'll get your information and she'll send out that unit to you within uh, a week, 10 days ish. So uh, please take advantage of this. We want every one of you to have one because we know that by investing a little bit into you, um, you're going to be able to test and see what I'm talking about and uh, realize that what I'm talking about is really a long term, reliable, works every time, robust solution for you. And so you won't have to run wires, bend conduit, whatever again. Okay. A little uh, video here to explain how to use them, and then we'll get moving on. 
SureFi is a revolutionary RF technology designed from the ground up to communicate over long distances and through heavy obstructions. Utilizing advanced techniques and modulations, SureFi takes RF to a whole new level of reliability and security. See the powerful possibilities of SureFi RF technology on your own project with the SureFi Evaluation Kit. Inside your kit are two range testers. Turn on both devices using the power switch on the back of the units. Once powered on, you can send a test signal from one device to another by pressing the button on the front of either of the units. The blue lights on the front of the device indicate the test signal strength. Instead of pulling wire, sometimes hundreds of feet in a building, from a thermostat to a furnace, first perform a range test using your SureFi evaluation kit. After verifying the system can successfully communicate from the thermostat to the furnace, you can confidently install a wireless SureFi system, saving time and money. Are there natural obstacles such as rivers and hills between your equipment locations? Use your range testers to confirm that your SureFi units will be able to communicate from your equipment locations. Once verified, you can install a SureFi system. No need for costly trenching or running wire across water. Traditionally, installing access control at a multi-story parking garage is labor intensive. With the range evaluation kit, you can efficiently test all your entrances. Once you've established that SureFi will work, simply install a unit at each access point. To demonstrate its signal strength, we use the SureFi range evaluation kit at the Empire State Building. Keeping one range tester in the lobby, we brought the other to the 80th floor. Despite 953 feet of RF interference, construction, and dense materials, we successfully maintained a clear signal. If you are looking for more ideas on how you can use SureFi in your project, visit our YouTube channel. With potential like this, how will you put your free evaluation kit to the test? For more information about SureFi or to see how you can get your free evaluation kit, contact us today at surefi.com. Okay, so please uh, today get uh, please call get one coming. We'd love to have one in each of your vehicles. We appreciate that. Now, of all the things that we talk about today for an integrator, this is probably the most important page, and that is how this is going to help you. Because if this is just some kind of a, another fancy uh, gadget with a couple of lights on it that isn't going to do you much good if it doesn't help you with a major problem or becoming much more efficient in your work so let's talk a little bit about the uh, value proposition for the integrators uh, when you go out and you do a bid okay let's say you're doing a bid for an elementary school and they want to put in a couple of gates across a uh, a parking area or whatever and you know that uh, in a standard installation you're going to have fifty thousand dollars in equipment um, and maybe you'll have uh, another fifty thousand dollars in in uh, running the wire renting a trencher fixing the concrete or the the blacktop you have to go through and and man hours and all that so it's a hundred thousand dollar job and uh, so, and maybe they're okay with that, and that's it's great. Uh, the next thing they always ask you though is, well, how soon can you do it? And so, if you tell them, well, we've got a lot of jobs lined up, and we can't get to it for three, four months, uh, there's not a very good chance you're going to get that bid. So what Surefi does is not only does it lessen that bid, so you can be more competitive with the people, you know, the other people bidding on it, because you can take out all of that extra wiring expense and equipment rentals that you have to do and man hours to run that wire all over the place but the second thing is it makes you more efficient in your time because if you have three months of work before you could get to that elementary school but you can look at that and say okay you know what i actually don't have to do three months of work i can get this done in a month and a half because i don't have to run or pull wire anymore so you can back that up and say you know what uh elementary school we can do that starting in a month and a half. And then your uh, the chance of you getting that bid just went up substantially, exponentially. All right, so uh, it helps you in your bidding process. The second bullet point there, which is really important, is that you guys have, and many of you are those people here, but you have there are people in your company that are star integrators. That's what I call them. Uh, and that's where 
these guys are the ones who know how to do things. They they do it right all the time. They're making you money. They're not letting out the magic smoke. They are uh, well trained. They can program. They can wire. They do all of that. Now the weird thing about it, we have someone who's that valuable in our company, and then we hand them a shovel or a trencher and say, "Go dig a hole for the next hour or four or three days or whatever it is that it takes to to run all that to run all that piping or conduit and uh, dig holes in the ground." So we really aren't using them that well. If we could, on the other hand, take that person, send them off to the next job, and so that that person can be making you money somewhere else and you don't have to worry about running all the wire, that person can be much more effective and you can be more, you can make more money with the same amount of people that you already have. And you don't have to hire new people, train new people. That is an expensive proposition. So multiplying our star integrators is important. The third way, sure, if I can help you as an integrator, is you can be confident with the product and have no callbacks. And now I say that, I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm not gonna say, no, you know, our electronic devices never fail. That just would not be true because electronic devices of every kind can, can fail. However, I will tell you, and I'm not even supposed no, I'm not even sure I'm supposed to tell you, but uh, we have an amazing, amazing uh, success rate. And that is we have less than a half a percent failure rate for electronic device. So 0.4%, which we're actually very proud of um, because number one, that means you don't have to do callbacks because of SureFi. Um, the other thing that we do is we make it so that you don't have to do callbacks because of some natural um, elements. For example, um, when you put wire in the ground and the lightning strikes somewhere close to it, it finds that wire and traces it right up to your installation and fries equipment. That's how that works, right? So we had a, a guy in Florida who was having so many callbacks with because of his wire that was in the ground. He was getting lightning strike after lightning strike. Now it wasn't hitting the actual the actual unit, wasn't even hitting the fence necessarily, but it was hitting close by enough that it was following the wire up and frying his stuff. And he was using uh, all sorts of protection, but it wasn't working. So he then takes uh, Surefire, replaces that wire. You know, he's already got it on the ground. You'd think, well, just use your wire, but it was it was a liability. So he goes out and he replaces the wire with Surefire, and now that wire isn't following a wireless signal anywhere. So what happens is, is his his uh, callback rates drop significantly because there's no more wire in the ground to uh, direct lightning to his equipment. So um, what we want is we want you to be confident putting it in and know that you're not going to have to come back for the Surefire unit. And uh, when we get to the app, I'll show you how some of that stuff can help. Um, the last one on this particular page that I feel is important for us is being able to revisit dead files. And I know that all of you get every single bid you do. Sometimes I don't, all right? Sometimes the people don't, you, you go out and do your bid for, um, they just say, well, that's more than we had in mind, or we're gonna have to budget for that for a while or whatever. And so what happens is, is that you have done all the work, you've figured it all up, you've done the sidewalk, whatever, you've done all this work to get the bid together, and they say, no thanks. So you put it in your file, say, well, I did that, but maybe someday, or you put it in a file on your computer, and you go on to the next job. Well, how Surefy changes this for you? Surefy can change this because, like a guy I know down in Las Vegas named Chris, he got thinking, you know, I've got a lot of, a lot of bids already done that I you know, don't have to really do any extra work on, but I can call them back and tell them that I can now do that job for substantially less because I'm using a new technology, is what Surefy does. So let's say that elementary school that we used the example previously. If that elementary school, you could call them up and then maybe they said, oh, that's not really in our budget. So you call them up and say, hey, uh, I know six months ago you said this isn't going to work for you, but we started using a new technology and we now can do that job for $50,000 instead of $100,000 there's a good chance you might get that bid, a good chance you might get that job because they really do want access control. So anyway, um, revisiting and resurrecting pieces of the dead file. This guy in, in Las Vegas he said about 60% of the people he called, he was able to land that job um, because of Surefy. So things to think about, ways to make yourself more effective. Any questions on that as we uh, before we go on? I'm just gonna grab a drink of water here. All right. Please uh, drop that in the chat as, as we go if you, if you can. All right, so 
We'll really quickly go through this. I want to get into the app a little bit, but here are the family of Surefire products. I'll have the exact same radio. You have uh, the far left is the Wigan Wireless Bridge. That's the one that most people in Access Control are using. That's going to have Wigan inputs and have that really robust, reliable radio signal. And then it also is going to have two relays each direction, and those can be normally open or normally closed. So we, so not only are you going to be sending from the controller back to your your gate or your door, you know, a, a command to open, you also can be sending from the door or the controller. Uh, you've got a, a door position sensor. You can see we've got a door position sensor here. And uh, you can be sending back um, a request to exit button. You can send uh, from the controller back to the location a buzzer if it's open too long or whatever. There's a thousand things you could use those relays for, and they've been used for a lot of different things. But you have four total relays on a system. The relay bridge, which is the blue one, is exactly the same minus the weekend. If you've got a situation where you need to send um, a relay to, uh, you know, just someone calls up the secretary and says, hey, I need to get in gate two, and she pushes a, a button, you just need relays back and forth. The blue one uh, is the relay bridge. Uh, the analog, which is something that not a lot of people use in the access control world, but I will tell you quickly that it's for uh, variable sensor input and variable control output. So it runs on variable milliamp, variable thermistor, and variable uh, voltage. So you can find a temperature or uh, oxygen sensor or whatever um, and send it wirelessly. Now the last one that I'm gonna show you is this, this red one. It's called an HVAC bridge. Now I know that you probably, considering you're here for an access control thing, don't do a lot of HVAC. I don't know that for sure because I don't know every one of your businesses, but the HVAC bridge was named that because it was first designed for an HVAC application, but it is a, a, a bridge that has eight channels out and two, two channels back of relays, and it can go one to multiple, as shown here. You can send the exact same signal to eight separate bridges with one controller, and you can send it back um, from those bridges with the two re returns. Now, these <clears throat> are, at this point, normally open contacts, and, uh, and we've done quite a few interesting installations with them, uh, specifically for um, things like Knox boxes where you open those up, you push one button and you've got a bunch of locations you want to open up all at once. So when the fire department rolls up, everything opens. Um, and there's been a really interesting application that way. I've also used it on perimeter alarms, uh, alarms for water and temperature sensors in, uh, in ca remote cabins and things like that. So this is an interesting one using a one to multiple, sending eight relays out, two relays back. So, um, just to touch base on one other thing with the Wigand, we already talked about the Wigand protocols, two relays each direction, makes it so you don't have to trench conduit and drilling. The last one is really interesting, daisy chain compatible. Now very seldom will you actually find a situation where the, uh, the unit's, the unit's uh, radio doesn't get through because that's what we're, we built it to do. But every once in a while you have things in the way like a mountain and we're not gonna be able to cheat physics completely. But you have things in a way like a mountain, you have, um, you're going across, you know, 20 miles of, of whatever, and you've got a, a high spot that you need to get it to or whatever. So you have the ability to put them together, daisy chain them together to increase, uh, increase your distance. Or like in the location I did in uh, um, Oregon, I went out on an install where we had three locations that needed information. And I've got a little motion sensor right there that keeps triggering as I move my hand. Um, and so we have three locations and all three can communicate with each other because you're daisy chaining together um, and you can send weekend or you can just send relays and take care of those three locations. So a lot of things you can do with Surefy that is a solution uh, that you normally wouldn't get. So, all right, now I haven't seen any questions in the chat. Um, so I'm gonna keep rolling until there is. Now, just in case you're wondering, if you look on your control panel down there, there's a little gray spot that says chat and there's a drop down arrow and you can go in there and, and ask your question. I'm gonna just type, well, maybe I'm gonna type. All right. <laughs> I guess we're, I'm not gonna type in there. Um, however, you guys can type in there with, it makes mine go away. So. All right, um, now, 
I would like to share with you just a couple things. Um, these are three examples of uh, places that installers have put Surefy units that are unique. Now, the reason I share them with you is you may not have this exact situation, and you probably don't. But I want you to, I would hope that these scenarios will get you thinking about ways for you to expand your customer base, for you to say, oh, you know what? I don't have that, but I have something similar. And if we use that idea and that application, we can stick it over in this situation and get, a, you know, expand the job, uh, pick up some customers we haven't had before. So let me share with you a couple of short videos on how Surefy has been used in unique ways that could maybe help you expand your customer base or think outside the box a little bit on how your company could, uh, could maybe expand. So this first one was at a municipality. And what they did is they had seven major buildings in the municipality that had access control already in them. But they wanted to have access control everywhere because you know keys are a pain. And they wanted to be able to put access control on every water monitoring shed, um, every park shed, every concession stand at every ba baseball field, everywhere throughout the entire country or the entire city, as well as on all the traffic lights. Well, doing that with standalone systems or getting uh, getting internet there was going to be very, very costly. And then an installer that worked for them called me and said, well, what about using SureFi in a location and sending everything wirelessly to that kind of a hotspot? Here's an explanation. This is where SureFi can help. Now they don't have to try to find the money to put a standalone access system into every small venue and water monitoring shed throughout the entire city, and then struggle to keep them all up to date with never ending changes. Many cities choose to just do without. With SureFi, they don't have to. They can use their existing access control system, which are centered in some of the larger service administrative buildings shown on this map. They can use the SureFi unit to project an encrypted wireless signal with the ability to control these remote locations throughout their entire city. For illustration, here we see the location of those principal buildings projecting a one and a half mile radius signal, which is easily within the SureFi radio's capability. The white dots represent some of the areas in the city that need the addition of access control. These areas have multiple doors and gates. By using the SureFi unit in these parks, cemeteries, gun ranges, and utility service areas, these areas can connect to and piggyback on the existing access control system, allowing them to control the entire municipality's responsibilities, saving them thousands in equipment and gaining peace of mind. The green dots show the location of the traffic control lights. One area of concern that the city has is the ability to efficiently control the traffic light access boxes for law enforcement, crossing guards, and others. These lights can also be connected with SureFi, allowing easy access and accountability to all of their areas citywide. Okay, thank you for putting up with that crazy person who's narrating that video. Sorry, you have to listen to me twice. But the idea is they were using SureFi and anything within a mile radius-ish of that building that already has access control could just be added as an additional door. So let's say you have a library and it has 15 doors that you already have on it. Well, but it has a park that's half a mile away and it has a, and it has a uh, watershed that's another half mile the other direction. All of those can be added as additional doors to that uh, library and just because SureFi has such a robust long range signal. So some, some thoughts for you. All right, the next one is for elevators. Now, I don't know if any of you are doing elevators, um, but this is something maybe you wanna consider because SureFi can make elevators very simple. I've been out on a lot of elevator installs and here's kind of a summary of some of the ways SureFi can be used on them. As elevators age and new technology becomes available, Building occupants want the ability to add heightened security and access control to every floor of the building. This becomes a challenge as cables deteriorate and often have insufficient wires to handle these upgrades. Wire is difficult and expensive and wireless has been traditionally unreliable. One of the places notoriously unfriendly to wireless signal is an elevator shaft. You experience this when you get in the elevator and you drop cell phone calls or data coverage. This is because an elevator shaft works like a Faraday cage to effectively minimize regular radio signals. But SureFi is not a regular radio signal, and elevator shafts are no match for SureFi. I have attended multiple elevator installations, and it amazes me how many places in their control systems a SureFi can actually be used. 
making these installations easy and cost effective. Here, to require credentials to call the elevator, this prevents unauthorized persons from waiting in the elevator until someone on a secured floor calls the elevator, allowing non-credential access to the controlled floor. The next place is here behind the floor button panel inside the elevator car. This allows you to add access control for individual floors on the inside of the elevator without needing extra cable, which can be extremely expensive, or having installers zip tying additional wires along the full length of the traveler cable. This severely hampers its reliable operation, even its ability to pass inspection. Next, a Surefi can be used between the elevator control device and the elevator control unit. This allows the elevator control device to be easily accessible instead of being parked on top of a difficult to reach elevator car. Depending on the model, the Surefi serial bridge can be used for RS-232 and 45 data between the ECDs and the ECUs. The final location is controlling the relays positioned near the elevator motor with the Surefi relay or Relay Pro devices. If you have eight floors in a building, for example, you can send all of those relay controls from a more easily accessible and clean environment many floors below. Okay. So some ideas there for you if you have not yet worked with the elevator controls world. Um, it makes things a lot easier if you don't have to uh, mess with the, the cabling and the wire in a lot of those scenarios. So this last one I would like to, to talk to you about is a very interesting one. And no, I know that probably the majority of you have clients that have large commercial buildings, um, especially things like warehouses, uh, factories, um, fulfillment centers, whatever, that have forklifts. Now, this will explain a little bit about the background, but um, this was a scenario where the company was uh, extremely liable for an accident, and um, they were more than, they were very anxious to get this solution that we figured out um, with Surefy into their 24 forklifts in this, uh, this location. What happened is uh, someone got badly injured who wasn't supposed to be on the forklift and i'll talk about it in there but um and basically uh i had a i had an installer call me and say hey john how do we get this to work they want to put access control on forklifts they want to be able to keep on or off that forklift only people who are supposed to be there who are checked out and credentialed be using that type of forklift and so we took a pile of parts we went down to the uh we went down to that place and started putting things together and came up with the solution. I think you'll like it. So here you go. Warehouse administrators can increase safety and profitability for the company as well as employees. So how do you do this in an efficient, cost-effective way? The solution is Surefy. Using the same badge or access fob they used to get into the building, your qualified forklift drivers can now start up and shut down their forklifts, as well as be responsible for the way they drive. This allows management to limit access of reach trucks or counterbalance forklifts, for example, to only those who are checked out and certified for their unique use. How is this done? By using Surefy with their already existing access control system, forklifts can be set up to require credential verification to even start it and can be monitored anytime they are in use at the facility. How did this application come about? Unfortunately, there was an incident in a warehouse near Surefy's corporate facilities yeah. where a temporary worker decided to get on a forklift, turned it on easily with the flip of a switch, and accidentally backed into a wall, severing her leg. This tragic event caused the managers of this facility to seek out a way to control access to the various types of material handling vehicles, as well as a way to track any impact incidents. This is done by placing Surefy units in every forklift and material handling vehicle in the entire facility. It controls the ignition of the vehicle and is connected to an impact sensor which, when triggered, sends an alert via the relay on the Surefy unit as an event back to the management team. They can easily identify a time-stamped impact or can set an alarm to alert the necessary people to react to an incident. Okay, so adding Surefy to a mobile thing like a forklift seems like a little bit of a strange thing but basically it was very simple we just added 24 doors to the facility and they um, use the same badge they go into the uh, front door and uh, are able to get on forklifts where they're checked out um, they loved the solution we actually did one other thing for them we had some uh, some default relays and we turned them so that when they went out of range they would shut down the forklift and uh, so if anyone tries to 
to take that forklift. They're driving down the road, and as soon as they get out of range, that forklift's going to die. And uh, if you ever pushed a forklift, it doesn't work so well. So anyway, a lot of great, great, interesting things on that application. And I so with all of these things, I hope that, I mean, you may not have an exact application that's exactly the same, but I hope that it gets the, the wheels in your head turning and you're thinking, wait a minute, I could possibly do this or I could possibly do that. Then you can expand your business, okay? All right. We've also connected Surefy units to locomotives, traffic lights, cabin monitoring uh, applications, uh, ISP monitoring uh, through with a serial bridge across, uh, this one was an eight and a half mile shot across the city up to a relay ridge as well as telemetry monitoring on microwave towers. So there's just a lot of things that can be Surefy can be used for. And uh, the only limitation really is our creativity in many situations. This is one that I put together just to show you uh, kind of a situation we had. We had a company that wanted access control put on their electric car chargers for their uh, electric cars, Teslas, whatever. And they wanted only the people who worked for the company to be able to plug in their cars there, which is fine. Um, but they didn't want us to open up the case they want us just to have access to the power and make it work through that. So we had to come up with a really interesting and creative solution. And the reason I bring this up is because we are willing to do that for any of you. If you have a question and you say, hey, I'd really like to be able to do this, but I, I really don't know exactly how to do it with the Surefy. That's where you call me or you contact one of your EPCOM representatives and they will help us help you through this. Now, if it's something that they can't handle, Call me and I have a field, a group of, of engineers that can field that question. They can come up with solutions, get some parts put together and say, okay, this is how you should do it. And uh, we're happy to help you that way. So in just a few minutes, um, I'm going to give you my contact information as well as, as April and, uh, or contact your, your FCOM representative and they can help you get solutions and help you work through these things so that you can confidently use Surefy as a solution for uh, whatever it is that you're working on. All right, now I mentioned during the uh, during the uh, elevator section, a little bit about some, new, I mentioned some new products. We've got a few things coming out that are new. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on them, but just to tell you, the Relay Pro, which is the top left side, is uh, a, a Surefy device with eight relays on it. Uh, two that are heavy duty, there's six amp relays and six of the two amp relays. And so that'll be coming up down the road um, for anybody who has a lot of relays that need to be moved, like in an elevator possible situation. The next is the Access Pro, which is very similar to the Wiegand that we just were talking about. It also has Wiegand, but it will also move um, OSDP. So some new protocols there um, as well as have the relays and that kind of thing. Now the bottom one is the Serial Data Pro. And this is one that uh, has been very interesting for me. I've been out installing them in, in unique locations. Um, everything from uh, pivots, uh, you know, for irrigation to access control points to uh, trains and uh, distance monitoring on towers. It's been a very interesting product. Now this moves RS-232 and RS-45. Um, and, uh, it's it's works it's great for the scenarios that is designed for. Um, you can use this in a lot of different ways. Now this is not yet available. This is a pre-commercial situation, and we've been out and installed about well quite a few units out in buildings, and some are in buildings but still being tested. But um, we're very confident that this product is going to be a fantastic one for us. Um, but however, if you do have something that you would like to find out about by way of uh, testing. Uh, and possibly using a serial bridge for RS-232 and RS-45, please contact me and uh, we'll see if it's something that we can work out and get a test unit out to you. And this might be a great solution for you for a lot of different things. Um, in the access control world, we ended up using it to uh, in two different ways. One, to connect to a, a secondary control door controller board that do, was connected with RS-232. And the other one was connecting from the computer uh, down to the bowels of the, the building where they wanted to program and not have to drag a laptop down into this uh, this room. So anyway, lots of different ideas, a lot of different ways to do things, and we'll continue to keep you guys informed as to when some of these things are coming out. So thank you, John. Uh, and yeah. I think we already have a couple of questions. I don't know if you want oh, to go over them. 
I, um, I don't see them on mine, so maybe if you'll read them to me, that would be okay. Yes, totally. So Ludlo is asking us about is Trophy used by any electric utility in their smart grid? And what are similar applications for this? Okay. Is if Surefire is used as a standard electric utility in a smart grid? Yes, correct. What? Okay. Um, Surefy is a one-to-one -one application. So when it comes from the factory, I'm going to show you right here. It's going to be paired from this unit over here, which is going to be at your door with this unit, which is going to be at your controller. So basically all it does is replace wire. Now it does not need to have any kind of a grid or a, a, um, a mesh network of any kind because the signal is powerful enough to penetrate through obstruction and get to where you need it to go. I've taken it through over 30 uh, steel walls as well as 12 feet of concrete. So it really gets through some interesting things. Um, now, whether or not it can connect to a smart grid, and I'm not 100% sure that with where the question is there, and I, that's why I kind of went to the mesh network. But the other aspect of that is whether or not maybe there's some things online that you can connect with it. I have connected Surefy with a lot of web-enabled devices. For example, if you want to be in in India and check the lights in the in uh, you know the back the acres behind your house and turn them on or off or check sensors and things like that, the Surefy units can take any really web-enabled um, relay device and then extend it from the house or wherever the Wi-Fi is out a long way to see what's going on. I had a guy do this. Um, his parents owned a farm that was over a mile away, but he wanted to be able to monitor you know, the temperature of things there and what gates are open and closed, whatever. He did all of that wirelessly with Surefy back to his house where there was Wi-Fi and then put it in the cloud. So when he was out of town working, he could find out and monitor what was happening at his parents' farm. So I, I hope that one of those two answers answered what you had in mind with your question. Please Thank let you. me know if I didn't. I'd be happy to keep going on that. Thank you so much, John. Another question, quick question. What is the data throughput of the Chirify devices? Okay, so I'm assuming you're probably talking about the digital devices, the, uh, the serial bridge. Is that correct? Let's see if Mr. Thompson will give us more information about that one. And just other, uh, like three different questions is about the application for surveillance cameras, point to point or ethernet. And I know those uh, might be over the, the bandwidth that we can operate, but then maybe you can tell us more about that, John. Sure. All right, so uh, the, the, the great selling point of Surefy is the ability to get through heavy obstruction, go long distances. The trade-off for the type of uh, technology that we're employing, which is uh, the chirp modulation technology, is that it is medium to low data. Um, so the bandwidth is not, there's not a, a lot of bandwidth there. Um, at its, at its uh, fastest, it only moves 8,000 bits per second. Um, so when you say that, that's really not enough for a camera, um, and uh, it's just a bridge too far. Now, we have done things like compressing audio and sent audio on it. Um, that's still not available yet, but just so you know that we never thought we'd be able to do that when we first started, and we have been able to move audio across it. Um, so for that, it's uh, it's for for cameras, it is not a great um, thing and uh, not a great fit unless you're wanting to just turn on the power to the cameras because of, uh, or do that remotely or whatever, but for the actual moving of the picture, not, not a great uh, fit. Uh, the other question on uh, when it came to, I believe it was internet, um, it depends on what you're wanting to do. If you're wanting to have it use, move the ethernet data, uh, if, it is a, if it's an RS-232 or 45 signal over ethernet, we have done that. Now, it depends on how much data is needing to be used. So this is a kind of a one size fits many, but we need to know exactly how much is being moved and what type of data it is. And I've been out and tested a lot of applications. So probably if you have a specific application on that, you probably need to talk to me. If it's using ethernet to just move internet data, that's really not going to be a good fit for this. This is a, a low data application. However, we have gone to HOAs where they have their uh, internet connection they have their hub 
And you know, when something goes wrong, somebody has to drive across the, the town and plug into the internet hub and say, hey, what's wrong with you with a laptop? We've taken that aspect of it and made it uh, wireless so that he can sit across the country, uh, tie into a relay ridge up above Phoenix is where we did this one recently and shoot down and see what's going on with the internet. So if it's monitoring the internet hub, yes, we can handle that. If it's moving the internet data, um, that is a bridge too far for this particular process. We're really more of a, a, uh, a wire replacement for controls. Thank you so much, John. And we got a couple of more questions, but then maybe we can continue, uh, or do you have anything else to show on the presentation, or should we go oh, with the questions? Yes. We're, we're, we, uh, we're going to do the, we're going to spend some time on the app as well as some wiring, but um, let me get through the app and then let's stop and take a few more questions. Does that sound okay? Yes, totally. That yeah. sounds great. Okay. All right, now I, I want to be sensitive to the time. Um, so with the app, now I don't know if you have one on your phone or not yet, but the app is available on the Apple App Store as well as Google Play. And um, SureFi 2.0 is the most recent version. However, just a word of warning, if you have an Android phone that's more than about nine months old, I would recommend, would recommend the SureFi 1.0 on those Android phones. They seem to run a little bit better. Um, so what happens is when you get the app and you bring it on your phone, I'm gonna just show you on mine and we'll go through it as well. When you open the app, it's going to come up with, if I can figure out how to touch my phone, there we go. It's gonna come up with a screen that looks like this. And you can see it both on the shared screen or on mine. I'll try to get that a little closer. And people keep texting me, interrupting there. So what happens is you take that and you're going to go over here to, and this one I'm gonna do on the controller interface, which is right here. This is going to be a QR code, and you are going to scan that QR code with the square, the little red square, and it's going to bring up this. There we go. We'll bring up this screen. Now you can see there there's PDF manual. It'll have a lot of um, wiring diagrams in it, and uh, it also um, is updated whenever we have new uh, concepts and ideas. That's what's nice to having a, a virtual uh, wiring diagram manual. So you can look in there and see anything you need uh, by way of how it should be connected. The other thing is a short two minute-ish instructional video. So if anybody has not installed it or you're sending it out with a, a technician or somebody who has not installed it, um, okay, uh, then that helps. Now, Victor, I just got the message. I think the video was uh, lagging a little bit. Maybe it was because okay. of the data from the phone, but everything else is, is. Okay, I'm actually going to go ahead and turn my Wi-Fi off on my phone so that uh, that doesn't uh, interfere at all. Is that is that better? Thank you. Yes, it's way better. Thank you. Okay, so you get the concept there. Um, now, when you're on that, when you are on that app. It's if you are powered up, which this one is, it's going to give you a green button here on the bottom that says advanced settings. Now on the shared screen, that's red because that one was taken, the picture was taken when it was not powered up. I'm going to push that green button and it's going to give me this and the unit is going to start doing a little blue light show coming from the top to the bottom. That basically is wanting me to hold the test button for five seconds. That is my proof of presence that I'm here connecting to the unit. All right, when it does that, it's going to bring up this page. And it's going to give me a number of things. Now this is the, for the HVAC bridge, and this is a little bit different for the Weekend. It's going to give me documentation, videos, configuration. Let me see if I can see that. Um, operating values, unpair bridge or troubleshooting. Now, I'm not gonna go through every one of these because there's a, a lot of information in there. But uh, if you look on the configuration, so it shows you the operating values first. So we'll go to the operating values. And this is showing us a history of the relays. So if I'm going to, you can see on mine, I've got uh, the relay one is closed and the rest are open. I'm gonna make a change here. And you can see it changes the history and then it's gonna go back. So you can see exactly what's happening with your relays. Okay, um, then, 
excuse me. Then if you go to the weekend information that's there below, the weekend information tells you what has been scanned and what's going through it. Now, I'm gonna just turn this over here this way. This is helpful when you're doing an RFID reader or to check your wiring on a Wigan device because you can look at it and see what codes have gone in. And if it's different than what the RFID reader is uh, looking for, you'll know that maybe you've wired it backwards or there's something wrong with the uh, Wigan information. Okay, so that's really helpful in on that screen. We'll go over to the next one. And that is the controller configuration. I'm gonna go back and go to configuration. This tells me about um, my heartbeat time, especially for a solar application. And it also allows me to enable and set fail safe relays for applications where you want the gates to stay open, the doors to stay closed, whatever, okay? Oh, I'm gonna do one more here. And that's this bottom one. This is called troubleshooting. Uh, the pair and unpair bridges is what you'll use the one to multiple with or if something is damaged, but you won't use that one often because they come paired from the factory all ready to go. The troubleshooting is one of my favorites because when you're out in the field and you've just wired everything up, you wanna test the relays and you don't wanna have to walk a mile away to go down and, and uh, connect uh, and swipe your card or whatever. You can go in here and you can just push the button Oh, I gotta hit the button and connect the relay, push the button and disconnect the relay. So there's a lot you can do on the app, um, but uh, that's the basic overview. You also have a lot of other ways to configure the radio and different things from the app, but I'd recommend you get the app. It's very powerful, very helpful to check all your wiring and things in the field and see what's been going on. So, um, Victor, do we have some more questions before we go on to the wiring? So maybe we can now check a few of the questions. Uh, Mario Masariegos was asking us about the frequencies uh, that this radio certified devices operate. Okay, so we use um, as a carrier signal, and I'm gonna call it a carrier signal because it doesn't interfere with or even behave like normal 900 megahertz. So we do use 900 megahertz as a carrier, carrier signal, but it outperforms 900 megahertz by about 10 times. And the reason is because the way we encode our information is completely different than any other radio technology. And so we're using 900 megahertz as our carrier signal, but it's going to outperform it in a major way. And it actually doesn't even, um, I have, we found that it doesn't even really uh, interfere with other 900 megahertz systems at all because of the way that we uh, do our encryption. So good question. Is that another one, Victor? Sure. Yes, let's check okay. one second. No problem. Also for Mario, he's asking us, I see that you have a system with one central controller that can connect to multiple remote units, like multi-point, is that correct? And how is the distances supported in this multi-point system? Okay, this is a little bit um, of an interesting question because we touched on the one-to-many, and it's but it's a little bit different than multi-point in that these are the, this is a relay only device and that was the hvac unit we did the one to multiple so if you had um 10 doors on the front of a large auditorium or something that you wanted to open all at the same time or you want to open these three then those two then those four you could do that with this by pushing the, the buttons however it does not have weekend so it's not a, a true access control a unit that needs to send weekend that you only have outputs with um, with the devices. And so each location is, uh, is just copied from the other. So if you have eight receivers and you have one, one controller, you connect to relay one, all eight relay ones will connect. Now you can differentiate that by wiring. So if you want door one to be on relay one, door two to be relay two, door three to be relay three, door four, and et cetera, then you can differentiate it with one to many, but it's not really a true multi-point because 
it's not receiving that uh, Wiegand data back. This is relay only and is differentiated with uh, wiring instead of using a self-addressing type of application. I hope that answered the question. Thank you so much. Uh, there is another one from Binai. Uh, how many devices does single unit support depending on application? Okay, a single unit will be both a controller side and a remote side. And so basically for most applications, for each, for every door or for every gate, you need one pair. Um, basically all we're doing is taking, if we're oversimplifying it, we're just taking this and making it um, wireless, okay? So, um, so basically for every one that you're doing, you need that uh, one unit that is paired at the factory to replace wire for that gate or door. So um, you can have as many of those really as you want next to each other, they don't interfere. I've seen 74 of them next to each other for 74 access points, but you don't really uh, need, you don't really connect multiple ones to a single um, with the, the Wiegand type of application. All right, um, do you have another one right now or should we go to the wiring and then come back and answer more? I think we can go to the wiring and then answer the final ones by the end of the web. Yeah. Okay, sounds great. All right, so um, we're gonna skip, jump over to the wiring really quickly. Um, we will show you, and by the way, here's some contact information um, for both Abril and uh, myself. If you have, uh, and she's with Epcom, if, and this is my phone number and uh, email address also. And if you have questions, please contact us. And I'll put that back up at the end of the webinar as well, okay? So uh, going through, um, I wanna spend a little bit of time, and I'm going to put this this way so that you can see it a little bit better. I'm gonna spend a little bit of time going over the basic wiring for each of these units and answering a couple of questions and then we will um, answer any additional questions at the end but if you are looking at the bottom of the of the surefi Wiegand bridge this is what it looks like and i'm trying to get that as big as we can so you can see it um, and that is looking at this portion of the bridge right here okay it's the bottom this is where we power it up and you have, uh, first of all, the, the two, first two, the red and the black, is the 12 volt DC input, okay? You do not want to feed this any other voltage. Please use a regulated power supply because if it gets up over about 15 volts, it will fry the unit. That's one of the biggest problems I have. People will call and say, I don't know what happened. They weren't using a regulated power supply, okay? So please do. Um, the... Uh, there, there are a lot of good ones out there, but something like the ST21A power supply is a good, a good option. All right, the next two are the is a backup battery, 12, and uh, that will do a 12 volt backup battery, you know, between five and 10 amp hours ish, and that backup battery is, um, is really helpful. And one thing that's really nice about the Surefi unit is that it works as a charge controller, so you don't have to worry about a separate charge controller that will keep that battery topped off. Um, when powered with 12 volts. The next is the V-Bus and ground. This is where you can uh, power up your auxiliary devices like your card readers, your door strikes, and that kind of thing. It also has a really cool feature we'll talk about in a minute, which allows you to bring um, other voltage in to use for uh, unique applications, but we'll talk about that in a minute. So if you have 12 volt devices and if you leave the jumpers in neutral position, um, these can uh, power those for you. All right. The next two, um, which I think you'll probably recognize, is D0, D1, and that is for Wiegand, obviously. And you have the LED one as well for a Wiegand. We also have the ability to add a, a double color LED if we need to for both green and red. But um, that's there. Now, one of the things that one of the things that is often brought up to me, and um, and I get a lot when people call is they can't, the Wigan's not working and they can't figure out why. The truth is, is that Wigan device needs to have a shared ground with the Surefi device. So if you have a Wigan device plugged in to a different DC power source than the Surefi device, 
you're going to need to put, run a jumper so that the Wiegand and the Surefy are using the same ground. Okay. All right. So D0, D1, and ground are the ones you need to connect for sure with the Wiegand device. All right. Now we're going to go up here to the top and we're going to talk about the relays. And the relays are relatively uh, simple in that the input relays are on the inside and the output relays are on the outside so the colors between and this is a this is a remote interface as you can see right there but the colors are going to be opposite on the controller interface because the two inputs that are blue and orange here in the middle your input relays are going to be output relays on the opposite side so here you have a yellow is relay one output the green is relay two output and those are coming from the inputs on the opposite side of the bridge so if you remember that your relay ins are on the inside your relay outs are on the outside and then you also will notice that your output relays have the option of a, of common and normally open normally closed and the input relays just have an option of input and ground that will help you differentiate now the input relays are rated for um, five volts input so you don't want to put 12 volts into that these are rated for things like uh, uh, loop detectors and, and things like that. They're not rated for a 12 volt input. Um, however, you can on the outputs um, run 12 or another auxiliary power through that. And I'll show you how to do that now. All right, so if you'll notice these red plastic pieces on the side of the unit, and I'll show it to you in real life. This is what that looks like. Can't quite tell, yeah, right there. This way they come from the factory. They're going to be set sideways on the middle post, which makes it so that they're neutral. If, and I'm going to run this down. If we want to have these outputs to do different things, these jumpers will determine what that's going to be. So in this case, if it's neutral, that, that relay is gonna close as an open contact to a closed contact, no power through it, okay? Now, if you want to add, bring this down, this is a picture of the top of that. If you want to add 12 volt power to that, like for example, a lot of door strikes, they need 12 volt power when you close it. This is our jumper one for our relay one. You're going to want to connect that to the front two pins right there. And those, those two pins right there are going to make it so that the relay one, when it closes, gives you 12 volts. Now, if you want to make it so it gives it a different voltage, this is where it gets a little bit confusing, so hang with me. If you don't want 12 volts coming through, but let's say you're doing a motorized crash bar and you want 24 volts, you can actually send that 24 volts through the V-Bus. You'll, instead of, instead of uh, using it to power something else, you can put 12 volts into it and move the jumper to the back two, and you can use that to do some type of uh, a unique voltage. So a lot of different options. Um, there's and it shows you this all in the wiring diagrams. But uh, basically, that allows you to take a look at some of the different ways that you can use the jumpers and the Surefy units. Now, um, there may be some questions on that. So uh, Victor, excuse me, I'm just going to put that here. If you w would let me know. Um, We'll finish up in the end with a little bit of information about the uh, the wiring for the wiring for um, daisy chaining them. But since I can't okay. see the questions, would you tell me what uh, some questions are, are coming up? Yes, certainly. Uh, is there a backup option uh, if anything accidentally happens? That's from Binai Data. Okay, so I understood that as two different things: a lockup option. Do you mean if the power drops or there's a, a miscommunication between them or one side drops, what happens with the relays? Is that what, is that the question? Because if that is the question, yes, we have um, default settings. So if you say, okay, let's say there's something that happens with the relay uh, connection between the two units or one side power goes out or whatever, we can tell the relay to do something. That is, we can do that. Um, there also is the ability to hold open and that might have been what the question is. And that is where you, let's say you have a, a school that needs to hold the, the traffic gate open for eight hours during school hours. 
the Surefi unit can do that. It's just, you connect it on the uh, controller side, it sends that signal to the remote side, that remote side will hold that until it receives a new signal. They don't have to have the signal going back and forth constantly. It just says, okay, hold that until I tell you. And then eight hours later, it says, okay, go ahead and release that. So I'm not sure which direction that question was going, but I hope I, that, that, that that answered it. Awesome. Thanks so much, John. There's another one from Richard Colvin. He says, I'm involved with HVAC also for rooftop or furnace applications. Could you explain the wiring? And he asked, what is the auxiliary use for on the Wigan controller? Okay. Um, so two different things here. Let's talk a little bit of the wiring on the HVAC. Basically, um, when you use uh, traditional HVAC equipment, basically it's a 24 volt AC system. Now our unit can be 24 volt AC or 12 volt DC, um, but tr traditionally it's 24 volt AC. So basically um, in this situation, you would have the ability to use one thermostat, for example, in a warehouse to control ten, uh, eight rooftop units. And you'd be sending eight relays of control out and having two talkbacks if you needed to. Um, basically that's you know your call for heat, call for cool, call for fan. You sometimes have multiple uh, stage heat, multiple stage cooling, and then, or you have uh, two different locations for something like a heat pump. You can actually send two different units to each side, wire one through three at the air handler and wire four through seven at the external heat pump. So there's a lot of different ways to do it. Um, but uh, that's basically the concept of how the wiring's put together. Now, uh, remind me of the last question again. Who is the second part of that question? The second part is, uh, what is the auxiliary use for on the Wigan controller? Okay, the Wigan controller, the auxiliary is a, a five volt uh, to hold high uh, remote. So it can be used to trigger an LED. Um, it can be used to do a lot of different things. Some people will use it to do a secondary uh, LED on their um, secondary LED on their card reader. Um, I will actually personally, when I do these kind of installations, I like to to jumper the secondary LED and have that green one come out of the relay at the top, so that when it sends the door, it'll also uh, turn the light on green. But it could be used both directions depending on the voltage. Um, it needs 3.3 volts, but it's up to five. So hopefully that answers that question. Great, thank you so much, John. There is a question about the training uh, from John Pierre. He's asking us, will I be able to be trained or certified by Surefi? Okay, so um, we do have um, some certificates that we can send out to people uh, once they've, and have, I think I even have a picture of that right here. Yeah, um, once they have completed um, advanced application wiring, that's usually one that we have done in, in in person so that they can connect to it and that kind of thing. Um, if we have people who would like to spend a little time in a web-based type of conference for now, because right now we're not traveling, um, I would be happy to take them through a few more of the, the intricacies of the wiring and get some certifications. Um, and I could send you out a certification uh, for that. Um, we would probably just spend a little more time on the different uh, types of wiring and uh, answer additional questions. Uh, maybe another half an hour type of thing would uh, get you enough information such that you could get a certificate from Surefi. Thank you so much, John. And just as a reminder, we're going to be having more Surefi sessions in the couple of, next couple of days. So please uh, check your AppCom website to check all the dates and also send us your questions. If you want to have a, a webinar that it's only focused on the installation part, on the wiring part, we can also do that. So please yeah, send us all your comments so we can schedule a different question, a different webinar for, for that issue. That might be a great idea, Victor, to be able to, if people want to do the certification, to do just a, a mostly um, installation and, and wiring one, um, we'd be happy to do that. That'd be great. That would be great. Thank you so much, John. One last question, uh, also from John Pierre. He's asking, if there is an electrical interruption, will the Surefi has a battery backup? Okay, like we showed on the wiring, there is a battery backup. Let me see if I can, right here, 
this yellow, this orange and black is where it can connect to, to a backup battery. It doesn't come with a built-in one, but you can connect it to a, a five to 10 amp-ish amp hour backup battery and can be used to charge that. So when most people install these, they do put backup battery on it because it also gives backup battery to, um, to uh, the, the rest of the system, such as card readers and, and whatever else. So uh, we recommend a backup battery for any system because sometimes the power does go out. So any other questions before we finish up with this little daisy chain piece? Thank you, John. I think now they're asking or showing some interest about the webinar for the wiring installation. So okay. please send us your comments and we'll be uh, working with John and set up a date for this new webinar. So please send us all of your information, your comments, and, and we'll set up that webinar. So we can continue, John, and then we can have the final questions by the end of the webinar. Great. So I just have one more thing I'd like to spend a little time with you on. Um, let me jump over here really quickly. Here's that. Uh, diagram of the of the backup battery there's your 12 volt power supply backup battery connected right here so uh, let me spend just a minute on the wiring specifications for the daisy chain and this is something that um, a lot of people have used for unique applications um, i did this like i mentioned i think in oregon we had traffic lights that needed to be connected three locations three loops on the ground and uh, we needed to be able to send it through a winding canyon about a mile and a half down. And, um, but they also had not only traffic light at the top and the bottom, which was a single lane canyon, but also a guy who lived in the middle and he had access to it and they just didn't need, didn't want to have trucks and trailers meeting on the road because it was a boat launch area. So they needed to control one vehicle on the road at a time. So we connected endpoint one to be the top of the canyon down here on the left. And that connected to a set of lights as well as a loop. The center was where the house was located, on, connected to another loop and also a light, a strobe light on top of the unit. And then the endpoint two was at the bottom of the canyon. And we had it set up so that it relayed from one to the middle, from the middle to the end. You'll notice that from the bottom left to the top left, from blue to blue, that's wireless. Then you're hardwired into the next system. These are together in one location, just in a NEMA box or something. And then you're wireless again to this location. So you have one, two, three different locations and uh, you're doubling the range of a Surefi unit, which can you know, be quite a, quite a distance. So just wanted to touch base on that uh, so people can see that. There's one other item that I wanted to show you and that is the commercial door kit. And I don't know if you can see it very well. We are developing right now with the use of a couple of uh, our integrators, a new product is called the Commercial Door Kit. And this allows you to have one or two doors um, for a commercial installation with battery backup, the power supply, wiring uh, lugs and everything that you need to run one or two doors in 12 or 24 volts all in one package. And the thing that's nice about that is that when, if you go into a commercial door, you have an exit sign, you have always on lights there so you do have power and it has its own battery backup so you can just tie into the power right there sure if i took care of the control wire problem but now we're trying to take care of the power problem as well so that you when you go to a commercial door where there's an exit sign or always already on light or you have power right there you can just take hook this right up to it tie into it you have your power in you'll have your surefi in and you'll also have a, a wiring block to connect whatever you want to it for the commercial door so anyway it's a commercial door kit that we're working on should be coming out in the next few months so uh, just a little plug there for the things coming out um, what other questions do we have Victor we have a question from Richard Colvin well is uh, are the manuals available online well, yes, on our website at epcom.net, you can find all the PDFs for the spec sheets as well as on the Surefi website. Yes, surefi.com also has them. Just You just go to which whichever um, product you're looking for and it'll have all the, the manuals and, di and wiring diagrams. And a lot more than I have here. I have just a handful that I've used to show people things, but uh, there's probably... Um, 20 pages of possible wiring diagrams uh, on the, the sites. And I, I know Epcom has a lot as well. Thank you. Yes, thank you. So one question from Brian looks, what will be a typical data rate over the radio RS 232, 230, uh, 245 in perspective? 
Okay, um, in its fastest setting, about 8,000 bits per second um, is the most it can do, uh, and that's with the the radio's settings set up so that it goes moving the fastest amount of data. Usually, the set when we do a command or an event-based uh, bit of information, that's not necessary to go that fast, but it depends on what's happening, if it's a polling system or event-driven or whatever. And uh, if you want some more, spec some more details on that, please contact me, and I'll throw this up here once again for everybody. Please contact me, and uh, I'd be happy to um, touch base with you about any of those additional applications that you are wondering about. And uh, so also, please contact EPCOM for product as well as as they can answer a lot of the questions. But if you have anything unique or something specific about things like this particular one about the RS45 or 232, please call me. We can talk about your thoughts and application. Thank you, John. Yes, and we have all the stuff that you need. And also, if you need help getting your test kit, we can also help you with that. So please contact your sales representative so we can help you with any product that you need from Shorefy as well as the tester kit. When another question from Mario, he is asking us, and I was going to tell you, if anyone wants to open the mic and talk a little bit about a project or or a project that you might have uh, coming up and you want just to tell, tell us a little bit about it, we can help you. So if you want to raise your hand or send us a message, I can open your microphone and that way you can talk directly to John. So one question is, for daisy chain topology, the remote unit connects wirelessly with the next master unit, like a mesh network? It's going to connect still one-to-one. -one. You're going to have, let me back up to that so that you can see my, you're going to have this blue system is going to be connecting wirelessly to each other. So that's a paired system from the factory. And then this, red system is going to be connected wirelessly to this one and that's a paired unit from the factory so that's one to one here and one to one with the red and then the the blue the blue and red system in the middle is hardwired so we're still in a one-to-one -one relationship and we don't need a mesh network because of the strength of the signal um which you'll be able to tell obviously when your when your testing kit comes in but uh, this is basically specifically for the daisy chain you're just going to go from system one to system one, hardwired to system two, then wireless again to system two. Does that answer that? Thank you. Yes. Thank you so much, John. And I think that was the last question. I don't know. Oh, well, now Mario asks us, uh, is like back to back in the middle about that question? I think the back to back in the middle just means that they're right next to each other. That is that is correct. We just usually will put those in the same box um, and just wire it right next to each other, and uh, so that those can be uh, so they actually all your inputs to the outputs inputs to the outputs both weekend and relay, and it makes it so it's a seamless uh, transition to the next set for either increasing the distance or because at that location you need to do some things as well like you might have a, a gate operator and an RFID reader that are kind of a, a distance apart and they're going across, let's say a cobblestone or a, a stamped road or something that you don't want to have to drill across. And then you go out to a controller as well. So sometimes you want it three locations, all of it to have similar controlling. And so you can do it there with the uh, daisy chaining the Surefy units. Thank you, John. And I think that was the last question. Um, so thank you so much for your webinar. I think it, it was a little bit over an hour. So I think it's great that everyone is having so many questions and there is so much interest in the product. So we're gonna schedule, um, uh, hopefully by the end of April, a uh, webinar just on the installation and wiring. Uh, and we have another session coming up next week. Um, let me check. So we got another session coming up next week. If any of this information was not clear and you want to join, please join in. And also we're going to be sending the recording of this webinar to your email so you can review all the information. There's Thank one you. another question, I think. One last question and then we'll, we'll end the webinar. About my question of the interfaces, inter, 
interface interface type. What type of interface the units have? For what application? Um, are we talking about a Wiegand application or an OSDP, or are we talking about just between Surefi units? Can you can you can you clarify that question for me? Yes, Mary. If you can send us more uh, more information about your question, so we can answer that. While he's doing that, um, thank you so much for having me, Victor and, and EPCOM and everyone who joined us. Thank you, it's been my privilege to be with you. And please contact me or, or EPCOM with questions, uh, applications or anything else. Uh, thank you so much for being with us. Um, do we have thank clarification you, on that question? Or yes, he was asking about the Wigan. Okay, so the Wigan interface, um, our Wigan unit, uh, it, Auto detects automatically detects anywhere from four uh, four to sixty four bit um, Wigan data, which of course most people are using twenty seven and thirty two, whatever. Or excuse me, twenty six and thirty two. Um, so it uh, it will auto detect any of those uh, Wigan protocols, and then it just sends that Wigan over to the other side and puts and pushes it out at the controller exactly the way it received it. So the controller and the Wigan device don't even know that they're not hardwired. And then, uh, and yeah, so for the Wigan, um, just a standard Wigan interface, but has auto detect for bit rate. Hopefully that answers the question. Yes, I think that answers the question. And yes, Mario, you can check on the data sheet. And then if you have any other question, please send us to John directly to his email or to April as well as my email. That That's the email that you're gonna get uh, with the recording of the webinar. Okay, well, thank you so much, John. Thanks so much for all this great information. And we're gonna end the webinar and we'll be sending the recording in a moment. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us this morning. And hopefully we'll see you in the future sessions from Epcom and Surefy. Thank you, have a great day.